electric gadgets. Everything I use and own runs on electricity, except for Cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie may not run on electricity, but he sure needs it and sucks it up while parked at a campground. If you guys can see this smoke and stuff caused by a fire, you can tell we had kind of an eventful day yesterday. But as of now, everything is fixed. Yeah, yesterday was kind of a crazy day. You know how they say life is always an adventure when you're nomadic. And uh, yesterday was no different. Steph stuck in a truck and myself were sitting at that table right there eating some Burger King goodness. And uh, for some reason, Steph just decided to walk over here in this area, over by that post, and noticed something. Noticed it was blazing, on fire, that we had a power surge. Things just started melting. I mean, would you look at that? Thing just totally melted down during a power surge. Which I was really nervous because I thought that this box part, or the normal plug is here into the post, I thought the electricity would stop in here and not continue on down to the wire that heads into Cousin Eddie, but I was wrong. And it melted. Caught some leaves on fire. It was pretty scary. I mean, will you guys look at this? That was plugged into it. Cousin Eddie was plugged into it and there's not much left. It's a little nerve wracking when that happens. Say we could have been at Disney, we could have been a Universal, we could have been in Old Town. Come back and everything gone. Luckily, come to find out that surge protector actually did save Cousin Eddie. Because all that wire was protected, just the head got melted. None of the wire got hot, Every, all the things inside, I cut it with a knife, are fine. I could have connected another end to it, but I said, you know what? Let's just get a new surge protector, a new electrical cable, a long one that can reach any pole, and just start fresh. And then maybe in another two or three years, just replace it. It's scary when that happens. You don't know whether to unplug before go doing things for the daytime and just not have to worry about it. And then when you're plugged in at nighttime, what if you're sleeping and that happens? All I can say is don't... Do not, let's say it this way, go ahead and splurge. Splurge on the best protector, surge protector you can buy for your, for your coach or trailer or anything. Don't skimp on surge protectors because if it wasn't for the surge protector being plugged in, I think all my electrical system would have been fried. It was an adventure. Anyway, everything is brand new. Took about 20 minutes to fix. Ran to Lowe's, got the new cable. Went to Walmart, got a new surge protector. And we're back up and running. Whole job took about 20 minutes. And I have zero skills. So, I don't know. It, it was a, a scary day. Anyway, today hopefully is not going to be so scary. I've got a lot of things to do. Like I'm going to do some generator work. I'm going to go down to the lake. And I am going to the swimming pool. And I'm going to take you guys on that all-day adventure at Thousand Trails in Orlando. One thing I do got to say, when that incident happened, I went up to the front, to the front, to uh, the family center, then over to the guard shack. Both places called to come, uh, people on golf courts to come down here and look at that pedestal to make sure it wasn't surging still to make sure there was power going to it and to make sure it was safe to stay parked in this spot as I was going to Walmart and Lowe's. Not one person checked on it. When we got back, stopped back at the guard shack, the guy said, oh yeah, spot 90, I'll send someone right over. All day, all night, no one came to look at that pedestal. I figured they were gonna have us move spots. We're still here and not once has a golf cart with a maintenance person came over and checked on it. That kinda, that's kinda scary. What are you gonna do? P.S. 
cat has not been out of the RV ever in her life other than to get out of the truck. But she has a boyfriend that just sits outside my window and does the worst meowing ever. There are definitely a lot of things to see here at Thousand Trails. One is this place is infested with amazing gopher tortoises. One just kind of hid down in that hole underneath this wall. They do make holes everywhere. If you have a brain, this is your game. It's not mine, obviously. That over there, that's the game of masters. Yeah, that, that's a game I can handle. That over there, too easy. This place is amazing and huge. The family rec center is ginormous. Rooms after rooms after rooms of media rooms, dining rooms, library rooms and plenty of places to connect your mobile devices and your laptops if you're a mobile nomadic worker because pretty much anywhere else in this campground you're not getting any cell service or wi-fi but this place here does have free wi-fi you just connect no password needed but it's mostly inside this building anywhere outside the building it's it's touch and go Oh, but then, once you leave the family center, this is what I'm talking about. You could spend all day here if you want to, but I find it a little bit warm on this winter's day. The crazy thing about this Thousand Trails, it's about 20 miles from home. I live in Wildwood, and our Thousand Trails is a little bit different. What they do here, because it's such a packed, full-on RV resort with like thousands of campsites, you can't just go looking for your own campsite. They bring you up here to the family center and make you park. And then a golf cart takes you to your sites. But they don't do that year round. It's only during high season, only during snowbird season. After that, you're pretty good to go. You can come in here and this place is empty. That's the way I like it. So I'm gonna leave mini cousin Eddie right there. Take you guys down here and see what activities you could do if you or with somebody and are bored and don't want to go to the theme parks. Obviously swimming is one of the activities. And don't get me wrong, for the longest time I hated snowbirds. I hated them. And uh, it, nowadays it's, it's, my mind is changing slowly. I, I gotta say that. Even though I'm a full timer, it's like, uh, I, I get it. I get why you come from the north down here for the summertime. It is frigid up there. And uh, it's just something locals have to deal with. And, and, and I'm saying that because over the last two days, I have stopped by campsites down towards where I'm parked and actually talked to people, which I've never done before. I've never just walked up to RVers and said, hey, did you paint that rig yourself? Or, you know, and, yeah, and finding out what kind of paint they used on the outsides and you get a lot of information and uh, everybody's so helpful and kind. Even up at the swimming pool, people are just meeting and greeting for the first time and becoming friends. It's kind of awesome. Lately, me and Steph stuck in a truck, or Steph stuck in a truck and myself, have been talking about people that find this lifestyle odd and how to convince somebody, hey, this is a pretty good lifestyle. The American dream has changed a lot in the last couple of years. And for a lot of people, this is the new American dream. And I get it. It's my dream. It's my dream and I still have no idea what the name of this game is called. This one over here on the other hand, ooh, a lizard, is uh, one of my favorite games to do. It's, this game right here, Putt-Putt Golf, when I was a little kid, we lived in a house that had an RV park just down the street and had a couple little things like little homemade castles and waterfalls and stuff like that. It was free, it was at an RV park, but they did it up pretty nice. And I was like five or six years old and I would just, back then it was, life was different, you didn't have to be supervised all the time. And I would just head over to the RV resort and play putt-putt by myself as a five-year-old or so. And uh, yeah, so 
putt-putts near and dear to my heart. Along with this game, horseshoes. For many, many years, my grandma had a horseshoe pit in her backyard. And every time I would go to visit, we'd get out there and play. And uh, it was quite fun. Brought the family together. But what also makes this place fantastic compared to some of the other RV, the Thousand Trails, is this up here. Right now it looks kind of ramshackly. Remember, it is winter. But during the summertime, this place is full of greenery. The people that do come here during the winter or summertime uh, bring seeds like tomato seeds and lettuce and everything else. And uh, we have a community garden here. Like I said, right now it's not much to look at. But during the right time of year, when it's not so warm out, <laughs> okay, okay, it's about like this. This is the perfect temperature. Things should be growing right now. It's like 86 degrees today in February. But I, I've often thought about going to Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart or something, getting some plants, some vegetable type goodness, bringing it over here and planting it, letting other campers and stuff like that help the stuff grow and then every time I come home from my days off I could check on the plants that I planted who knows 2022 is a whole new year it might happen yeah the pool is jumping today there's actually two swimming pools here and a hot tub and in the middle of the day if you don't like crowds avoid the pools me, myself, I was having a good time up there. I enjoyed the water, I got a little bit wet, swam for a second, got out in the sun and realized, you know what, it's just too hot. Let's take the camera out and walk around. S show people what there is to do if you live the RV life. And this is it. This is it. But, but we were talking about how to show people what could you show people that the rv life is good and living in a house is uh for some people great but for others not so great i mean you're paying a mortgage that you're never probably going to pay off a lot of people go oh it's an investment not if you don't sell a lot of people don't buy houses to flip them a lot of people buy houses to make a home then what do you do? You're paying this mortgage to this bank and this lender and, and uh, you're going to work, coming home, going to work, come home to pay for something that you're really probably never going to own or show a profit off of. So last night we drove through the RV park looking at every single RV we could and discussing. Yeah, if you brought somebody that doesn't know nothing about the RV life to a park like this, would it change their mind? And I have the feeling it would change some people's mind and go, you know what? Yeah, the RV life may not be for me, but maybe a houseboat, maybe living on the water is for me. And then there's going to be other people who go, you know what? Not bad. $499 a year. Everything's paid for. Your electric, your Wi-Fi, your sewage, your cable, swim. You got all this fun stuff for $500 a year. You cannot get rent for that. You can't. A half a week's paycheck my rent is, or my rent, my mortgage is paid for a whole year. And that is definitely hard to beat. $500 for a whole year of living. I think that's how you talk somebody into changing their lifestyle. I mean, that would, that would flip me. I mean, there's ways to do it for free, too. You could head out to Arizona and live for free, pretty much. 20 years ago, that would have been me. Now that I'm old, I like some amenities. And I don't mind spending a little bit of money for the entire year and having all this great stuff. Thousand Trails is not a bad investment. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, would you look at that? Some more YouTubers. Trailblazing Travels. Looks like I'm not the only one that likes living this lifestyle. Lots of people do. Uh, 
How great is this? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's not, it's not a bad life. It's a pretty good life and I'm happy to be living it. I jumped on the first RV I could find almost three years ago, Cousin Eddie for $5,000 on Facebook and I never looked back, never looked back. Could I have waited and held off and jumped on a better RV? Possibly, but I just wanted to jump into this lifestyle feet first, feet first. And uh, it's been working out. Little problems here and there, hence fire, water pump, fan belt brake, some little minor things. But don't you have to take care of certain things in, in a normal home? For $5,000, and what it costs to get into the thousand trails for a lifetime membership. It's definitely been worth it. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off, go grab the laundry, and uh, get ready to go on a different adventure. I, this here was just kind of a morning thing. I still have to work on that generator a little bit this evening. But other than that, life is good. Until the next time from down the road, I love you all. Peace out, everybody.